There's Terry. Good morning and welcome to the first Sunday of Advent, Advent at Adamsville Presbyterian Church. Good morning. I'm happy to worship with each of you today. I want to do something a little different as I begin this morning. I want to use a scripture and make a quick statement, if I might. We do have a session trustee meeting following this worship service to talk about whether or not we're going to be able to open church or whether we're going to stay on Zoom through December. This is from the book of Micah. Most everybody knows the eighth verse. It's one of the most important popular verses in the Old Testament. But I want to start with the sixth chapter, the sixth verse. This is all about what God requires. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul. He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. I would remind this church that whether we're worshiping in person or worshiping in our homes through Zoom, we're still the church of Jesus Christ. The church is much bigger than a building. The church is its people. And we truly are the church as we gather in our homes together and as we worship and praise Jesus Christ this Advent season. And one thing I would really ask of the Adamsville people, if it is that we can't come back to worship, please do your best to be every Sunday morning together for the 11 o'clock worship service. We need to be together if we're the church. We need to praise God together in Advent. And I would beg you to do your best to all be part of it, whether it's in person or whether it is in our living room. Joyous and concerns this morning, we always pray for Mia Thomas, who is struggling to overcome a bout of cancer. We pray with Bill Benedict. We pray for my dear friend Bob Davis, who is fighting in a hospital in Pittsburgh. And they're all the names I have, but I'm sure Jean has a list that I don't have on my computer right now. But let's pray. God, we ask healing for all of the people who heard it, Adamsville. We call out Mia. We call out Bill. And we call out Bob Davis. May the miracle of your love gently rest upon each. Bring healing. And be with us as we worship, Lord. Make the air electric with energy. May all of us draw closer to you this day because of our time together. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. And now I would give it to Jean. Maranatha, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Come with a flash across the sky. That every eye may see. Come with your fi refining fire. To cleanse this to earth cleanse of all earth. injustice. To, to cleanse each soul of every sin. To purify to away purify everything, everything that pollutes your people. And all that corrodes your creation. Come quickly, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus. That your creation might be restored to the people you desire be, it to be. Maranatha. Amen. Amen. And the invocation. Lord, the Christmas Lord, story, Christmas is, story so is so familiar. We have heard it so, heard often, it so often that many, that many times, times it does it not strike a fresh chord. We pray that we pray as we worship as together, we worship this together this Advent, that we will that be, we will be by your amazing, amazing, amazing. 
give us your Holy Spirit so that we might share your truth and apply that truth to our lives. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. And now, Nikki, with the hymn, O Word of God Incarnate. Now let us join for the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, in God the Father Almighty, maker, maker of heaven and earth, and, and, in, Jesus and in Jesus Christ, Christ his only Son, Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the, Holy, conceived Ghost, by the Holy Ghost, born, born of the Virgin, suffered under Pontius Pilate, under Pontius Pilate was crocified, dead, was crucified and buried. He is descended, he descended into, into hell. hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of God. Amen. The prayer of confession. Stay awake. Be alert. Be alert. For you have no idea when your master might return. But we do know this. That if the homeowner knew what time of night the burglars would arrive, he would have been there armed to prevent the break-in. Let us be prepared then. For we do not know when the master will return. Master, forgive us for living as if you will never return. For living to please ourselves. Rather than you. Awaken us. That we might begin to live alert lives. Ready for your return. Today, tomorrow, and always. Amen. I will tell of the kindness of the Lord. Of the deed for which he is to be praised. 
I will tell of all the Lord has done for us. Which he has done according to his compassion and kindness. He said, surely they are my people. And so he became our savior. In all our distress, God too was distressed. And the angel of his presence saved us. In his love and mercy, he redeemed us. Praise God for our salvation. Amen. And now, the first Sunday in Advent is hope. Watch and wait for Christ's coming. Light the candles of hope, peace, joy, and love. Remembering the promises of God to this prayer. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, it may or may not take the first time. We light this candle in hope. Hear God's promise of hope from Isaiah 2, verses 2 through 4. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. Let us pray. Faithful God, out of war's chaos, you bring us the order of peace. Renew us in hope that we may work toward Christ's advent of peace among all nations. God of promise, God of hope, into our darkness come. Come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Thank you very much, Jean. Now we come to the junior sermon. And that's a time to celebrate our faith with all of the young people of our church. Advent is a marvelous time of year. It's the beginning of the church year. For the Christian church, this is truly New Year. We begin by celebrating with watchfulness the coming of a little tiny baby Jesus of Nazareth who grew up to be the Christ who died on Calvary's cross, was raised from death to life and stands as our Lord and as our Savior. To watch. Have you ever thought about that? You know, in the old colonial period in America along the seaboard, Homes used to be built, and there was kind of a tower on top of the hull, and that was called the widow's watch. And the idea was that widows or women, before their husbands were heard at sea, would go up there with binoculars, and they would look out on the landscape, and they would watch for a ship to come back with their loved one in it. And they very faithfully would go up there day after day, hoping that the ship would arrive. In all of the major cities, there are old homes built with that type of a tower at the top of the homes. There's three or four of them I know of here in Erie. But the idea in the ancient period was you would watch, you would strain your eyes, you would look as hard as you could way out into the distance to see a ship coming into port. Well, we kind of do that every year at Advent. We're on a watch. We watch for the Lord Jesus to come as he did in that little baby with Joseph and Mary and the angels and the shepherds and the wise men watching for the Messiah to come. 
for one who would be the savior of the world. And one of the things I always like to remind young people in particular is that we know the whole story. We know how it was that Jesus didn't stay a little baby. He grew up and became this wonderful savior. But at Christmas, we celebrate the birth. And I hope all of the young people have Advent calendars. I always had them for my children. Every day during Advent season, you would open one of the little folders and you get the Christmas story. This marvelous event of Jesus coming into the world. And I want all of you this year to think about Jesus and to watch for Jesus and to really celebrate together this good news. And then on Christmas Eve, whether we're in person or at the church or whether we're watching through our computers, the good news will be proclaimed. And one of the most delightful things is that statement we always make is we light our candles Christmas. I always have one of the young people bring a candle down the center aisle and they light my candle and I like the person standing beside me. But there's always a phrase we say, Jesus Christ is born, pass it on. And I think that's the happiest phrase of all, pass it on, Jesus is born. And that's what we're gonna do again this Advent. We're going to celebrate the birth of a baby and we're going to pass it on in the hopes and in the prayer that many, many new people will come to believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior this Christmas feast. Well, thank you very much. And our Father, we thank you for all of these young people. We give praise for their presence and always bring them back to us. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. And now we come to the morning prayer. Our Father and God, each of us in our own way, opens our hearts and minds before you. Oh Lord, our God, there's so much occurring in life every day. We pray that you be present on the face of the earth to end fighting to end division, to give people hope and meaning, to help people answer the tough questions of life. We pray that you be with all of the leaders of the earth, giving them the wisdom to do right, to end war, to do justice, to be able to bring people together in such a way that justice is supreme. We pray that you will keep this nation of ours free. We ask that you bless all of our leaders, President Trump and President-elect Biden. Give this country the wisdom to be moral and to do right, to live as you would have us live. We pray for an end to all war. Our military keeps us safe. Protect them in their bivouacs and barracks. Be with each. We pray that they defend this land and that they be safe. Be with our fire departments and our police first responders who put their lives on the line every shift. We pray they not be hurt and always they come back to their stations in safety. We pray that you will heal the sick everywhere, that you will give counsel to people as they make important decisions that they be made correctly. Comfort the many who mourn and be with those who come to journey's end before this church worships again. We pray they have faith for everlasting life. 
It's wonderful to be in Advent again, to again watch for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, to celebrate the birth of a marvelous Savior. We ask, Lord, that you will indeed make this a year in which people find the gospel relevant, open hearts and minds to the call of Jesus Christ. We have this horrible pandemic that the world is facing and fighting. We pray that the vaccine that is planned will work. And we ask that people not die from it. We pray that you control the numbers of people who are infected, bringing healing to those who have the disease. We pray, Lord, that the church be present to feed people who are hungry, that the church be present to dry the tears of the many who do suffer in our world. May we be involved in healing. And all of this we ask in the name of our Savior, the Lord Jesus, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now I give it to Nick. <laughs> Through all 
I absolutely love that hymn. Thank you so much, Nikki. That's one of those hymns. I sing loud and off key, but I sing it loud because I love that hymn. Two scriptures, both of them are suggested scriptures for the day. From the Old Testament, from the 80th Psalm. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock. You who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. O Lord of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us the scorn of our neighbors, our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts, let your face shine that we may be saved, and then jumping down to the 17th verse. But let your hand be upon us, the one at your right hand, this one whom you made strong for yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life, and we shall call on your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hope. Let your face shine that we may be saved. And the scripture this morning is the lectionary passage. It's one that I've only preached one other time in my ministry, taken from the 13th chapter of the Gospel of Mark, beginning with the 28th verse. It's the lesson of the fig tree. From the fig tree, Learn the lesson as soon as its branches become tender and puts forth its leaves. You know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the sand, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge. Each with his work and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight or at the cock crow or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. I know these are difficult times for Christian people. Many people today tell us that we are living in the twilight of Christianity. They suggest religion no longer fits the modern perspective. They argue that organized religion will pass away from the earth probably within our generation. They scoff at people who rely on the Lord Jesus Christ to get them through the current pandemic. We hear these things, and we cannot listen to them without being troubled. Yet we who believe continue to watch for the Lord. And this we do with great enthusiasm and emphasis each Advent season. 
our confession is exactly the same as Peter's confession made so many hundreds of years ago. With great joy and hope, we say, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. It is this truth that has survived through the experiences of the ages and outlasted every other hope of civilization. The only thing in life that doesn't change is the cemetery. The cemetery only grows larger. Empires come and go. The great Roman Empire is no more. Most of us know very little about it. Dusty death has swallowed it up. Empires, even the greatest of empires, last only for a season. Just look at the map of the world and how it has changed in the last 100 years. One error comes, it has its season, and then it passes. Another error arrives. Today, the United States and China, China are prominent. The Pacific Rim will dominate much of this century, according to all of the experts. This civilization of which we are so proud will be radically different 1,000 years from today. History will record much about us, but we will be no more relevant in a future age than the Middle Ages is to us today. Our age will go and it will be forgotten that Jesus Christ will remain forever. For Jesus Christ is alive today tomorrow and forever. For God in Christ invaded this mortal world of ours and identified himself with the human race. I wanna suggest that we can learn a great deal from this fig tree illustration. It is much like a parable. In Jewish literature, the fig tree is a symbol of the joy of the messianic age. The suggestion is that the coming of the Son of Man is as easy to see as is the coming of spring. I've always been delighted that we celebrate Easter in the spring, for we see the resurrection all around us. In the spring, everything comes back to lives. Flowers pop up from the ground, leaves appear on the trees. When a person is depressed, I often remind them of this truth. One Easter, a great many years ago, I was particularly sad. A dear friend of mine, the Reverend Bob Rogers, who at time was the pastor of the Gerard Presbyterian Church, took me out to breakfast. And he said to me, Harry, look around. Everything is coming back to life. He said, it's Easter, my friend. Believe that and you will be okay. And I will confess that his words greatly help. In fact, it helped so much that I still remember that conversation, although it was more than 35 years ago. Verse 29 says, so also, when you see the things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gate. I think this refers to verses 24 to 27 of Mark 13. It refers to the coming of the Son of Man. Remember, after this passage in scripture, Jesus immediately went off to his crucifixion and then to his resurrection. There's also a fact that the Jews revolted against Rome. There was a horrendous war that lasted from 66 to 70 AD. 
Jerusalem was totally destroyed in 70 AD. There was not one, left one stone standing upon another, and the people were taken into captivity. But following the resurrection of Jesus Christ, an amazing great thing occurred. The Holy Spirit of God was given to the church. And believers began their ministry, which spread out to encompass the entire world. Now, the question remains in this particular pericope, what does the coming generation mean? Was Jesus speaking only to the generation of his disciples? I think not. I believe Jesus is speaking to all generations until the end of the age. The sufferings of each generation are always temporary. These sufferings never last. What is essential is the word of God. The 40th chapter of the book of Isaiah, the first 11 verses are very prominent to the Christian. They're part of every Advent season. Isaiah is speaking to our hearts when he writes, a voice cries in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. That's exactly what all of us have to do right now in our own lives. Jesus insists that the day or the hour no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the sun but only the Father. In Philippians, the second chapter, verses six through eight, we are told, though he was born in the form of God, he did not regard equality with God as a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. And this is the great exaltation. Jesus on the cross is lifted higher than high. Jesus did not know anything beyond his own generation. He limited himself. He did not know there would be a new world or the United States of America. He did not know that someday there would be rocket ships or fantastic computers. For he limited himself and became a person. And then he died for our salvation. Acts chapter 1 verse 6 and 7 says the same thing. We are not to know the times or the seasons, but we are to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. We should never calculate the end date of the world. We know that for us, it will happen in our own generation. And that is enough to know. Every generation totally dies. The followers of Jesus know the end will come without knowing the time or the hour. Believers must always keep alert and they must beware. The end of life can occur anytime. This passage tells us the future is entirely in the hands of God. Like the slaves, Christians are to keep awake and watch. The slaves did not know when the Lord would return. In the ancient world, there were four watches to the night. This passage says, stay awake through all four watches. Do not be found asleep when the master comes. This passage suggests that there is much work to do in every generation, and believers are the ones who must do the work. I remind you of the great Lord's Prayer. We said it just a few minutes ago, and we prayed, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
if this is to be accomplished, it's not going to be the unbelievers who accomplish it. It will be the people who confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Light Savior. We begin the Advent season today. Advent is a time when people are to respond to the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are to watch for the birth of the baby. So I ask you, are you are going to watch for Jesus or will you merely wait? This morning says, take heed. Watch for you do not know when the master of the house will come. What I say to you is watch. Watching is so much more than waiting. The good news is that Christ has already come. The Easter event is complete. For you see, as Paul Harvey would say, we know the rest of the story. So I call on every member of this church to actively watch rather than passively wait for Christ during the Advent season. Advent is a time of vigil, a time in which Christ actively anticipates the coming of the Messiah. It's a time fulfilled, and it is a time to be fulfilled. Advent is a time when we, in our needful condition, wait for the Lord Jesus Christ. And we need to walk a narrow path, a path to faith, and a path of service. Let Life's journey at times is hard, and it can be an uphill climb. It is uncertain. You and I cannot afford to be passive. We need to be aggressive in our quest for faith. It's much like waiting for a phone to ring. I've used this example before. Many years ago at Elmwood, I had a person despondent sitting in my office, terrified because he'd lost his job and his mortgage was due. And I reminded him that he had done all he could do. He had prayed about it. He had sent his dossier out to every place he could send it. He'd made a million phone calls. I said, you just have to figure that somehow it's gonna work out okay. Be at peace, maybe your phone will ring this day. And he went home and I got a call about an hour and a half later and he said, Harry, you're not gonna believe it. My phone rang and I got the job. And that is the way it is in the spiritual realm. Each person must be open to the power of faith. We have to wait and we have to watch. Advent reminds us of this great truth. Your faith and prayers have brought you to this point in your spiritual journey. We are aliens and sojourners on this earth. We are destined for eternity. We are far away from our Father. The day will come when each of us runs into our Father's home. I remember my first sermon illustration given at chapel at geneva college i've used it four or five times in the last 12 years i've been here it was my best illustration and i've been going down home hill since 1963 but i never forget the delight as a little boy going to see my granddad dad mom and i'd get out of the car would run up the apartment building steps we would get to the phone call his number granddad would answer the bell would ring would go in would get in the elevator go up to the eighth floor the elevator door would open and granddad would be there with his arms open to me and i would run down the hall as fast as my little legs would take me and i'd leap into the air and granddad would catch me and we'd hug each other and two things had to happen for that to work. One, I had to have my arms open, but two, granddad had to have his open. And it is the exact same way in our relationship to Almighty God. God stands with his arms open, but you and I have to open our arms to God and we have to run to God and we have to embrace our God. And in that, we find peace and we find hope. What I'm really saying this morning is you and I are made for eternity. Know that Jesus is the Lord of history. We need to see life through the eye of faith. 
believe in Advent and life's journey becomes easy. Life is no longer an uphill climb. Advent is the coming of God for our salvation. And I make you the promise we will not just endure. We will live triumphantly today, tomorrow, and forever. Well, now we come to that place in our service where we have the celebration of offering. Remember, the goal of our church is to be a very effective instrument for the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that we have the ability to do ministry well and that we're active in the community. We support missions and we support this marvelous church of ours. In fact, Tuesday is known in our denomination as Giving Tuesday. If you want to know something about it, get on the Presbyterian website and they will tell you a lot about it. I love this church of ours. I love Adamsville. And I do love our denomination. And I do pray that we have a magnificent bright future. You can give online or you can send a check through the mail. All of that is on your board. Our Father and God, we thank you so much for the Adamsville Church and for the privilege we have to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. We would ask, Lord, that you would Use our offerings to strengthen your kingdom on earth. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. And now I would call Nikki for that good old Welsh melody, Go Children with My Blessing. <laughs> Nikki. Remember, we have session trustees immediately after this to talk about whether we stay online or whether we go back to active worship. Go in peace and may the grace and mercy and power of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless all of you now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>